My name is Dylan Mullins, my gamer tag is Hotform, and my team is Root Gaming. My real name is Lan Tran, I'm Nilio, I'm 24 years old, and I'm from Vietnam. So I know my opponent is Nilio. I don't really know anything about him. I've interacted with him a lot because he does play on the North American ladder, and he's been on my friends list for probably six months now where we just kind of chat. He's a really good player. I think that he has full potential to take me down if he gets a little lucky but I'm gonna do my best in the matches and I think I can beat him. I play against Hotform a couple of times on ladder. He's a nice player, like he only plays uh, control decks most of the time, so he deserves my respect for that. We just played some games against each other and he was a really good opponent. As soon as someone adds me and then they prove themselves to be friendly, I'm happy to keep them around. He's also a great streamer. He's a very cool guy, like he always respond to it's uh, viewers. I play against a lot of people who I consider my friends. Once you're in the match, they're really just your opponent. And it kind of sucks after the fact. You know, it's a little bittersweet if you win. And I had some of this at the America's Championship already where I beat people that I was really good friends with. You just have to do your best and no opponent would ever want you to go easy on them or something just because you're their friend. I'm not going to go easy on him because, you know, I want to win this tournament. So I need to beat everyone. I'm actually not scared of anyone because they if you want to win the whole tournament, you need to beat everyone. Like, you cannot be scared of anyone. You can bet tonight I'm gonna go home, study a lot, and figure out everything. But at the moment, he's just another opponent to me. If I have to say something hurtful, I have to say, I'm sorry, but I have to beat you. Hot four. Alright, so Hot Form versus Nilo, our third match of the day, where we have yet another very interesting clash, not only of players and regions, but of classes. My name is Frodan, I'm joined by Crip and Kibler, or as we like to call it on studio, the Kribbler. Okay. I, I don't know. Which sounds, I'm game. That's, uh, <laughs> it, it sounds a little bit dangerous, like a villain it does, yeah. in a Batman. It, it, yeah, it definitely sounds like uh, someone who, who Batman might be fighting. But, uh. <laughs> this this is the match that um, I, I was I was most excited to see. You know, Hotworm's probably the one of the closest uh, closest friends out of the the pro players that that I have. I just, I just you know go to dinner with him every now and then. Yep. Just like to talk. And uh, Nelio uh, is the one who has the most impressive track record in the last two months. He's only dropped one game out of about almost 20 and that's right and uh, it was actually against uh Kno, which actually just took some games yep. at uh at the tournament here so um it's he's, he's really really doing well and uh, i i mean saying that doesn't even describe it like when when you go like you know 15 or 18 and one or however many games he's had in the last mm -hmm. two months that's incredible when it comes to hearthstone it's true a player that only rivals that kind of consistent recent times is tice that's true. from europe the european champion so who do you think will win? We'll find out. Make sure to send in your thoughts on social media via Twitter by hashtagging AMWIN. This is for Americas if you're rooting for Hot Form, who does represent Canada, that maple syrup blood. Yeah. And we do have APAC, the Asia Pacific region. Of Still course. undefeated. Nelio yeah. from Vietnam. That's right. That's three, the, the, the three, three zero. Out. And this this might seal the deal if Nelio takes it. Yeah, not only is APAC uh, undefeated overall in terms of far, the Asian regions as a, as a whole are undefeated right. today. So far, we've okay. seen we've, we've yeah, seen China. both China and the APAC uh, competitors have emerged victorious what? in their matches today. For now, we'll yeah. see. Game number one is Let's about to begin. Hot form versus Nilio. Now, this is something that uh, we mentioned very briefly, but there is a lot of different classes represented in this match specifically. Six different classes for all of the players here. They're very interesting that Hot form also chose to bring Rogue. Yeah, um, I, I was talking to him about it. You know, are you feeling confident about Rogue? And I uh, said, well. It's hard to say, but uh, Muskaka won with it, which is a good point. <laughs> yeah, well, so, so Hopform said... can win games. He, so Hopform said, uh, it, I feel really good that, you know, someone else won with Rogue, so that <laughs> way, um, you know, if I lose, I'm still justified in feeling it, it's good. The second thing is Hopform really thought about the strategy. He got to share with me a little bit with, like, he thinks his opponent's going to lead with this deck, and so he's going to start off with Rogue and just go for a big surprise win based off elimination. He, sees, he says, Nelio probably won't start Warrior because... He never starts Warrior in all of his matches. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of that and get that Rogue out of the way. And it's even better for me if I face against Hunter that's a mid-range. So I think Hawthorne can be really comfortable when he finds out that Nilio does seem to be playing that mid-range style. It's still a really tough game. Um, mid-range Hunter is one of those decks that gets... Like, even when 
it has a fair or good mat uh, or a bad matchup, it's really not that bad. The the Argent Horse Rider draw from Milio there uh, definitely illustrates this is probably more of the hybrid style of Hunter with a little bit more aggression rather than just the late game style. Sure. And because it's slightly more aggressive, that might give Rogue a more problematic time. You know, Argent Horse Rider, for example, much more complicated to do it than the substitute that you often have, which is the Wolf, Wolf Rider. And one of the one of the, the big difficulties that Rogue can have in this match is the fact that it does its hero power is making that weapon, which it uses its life force as a resource in order to deal with the opponent's minions. And the hunter with uh, the hero power and weapons like Eagle Horn Bow, charge minions like Argent Horse Rider can put a lot of pressure on that resource. Wow, well um Hot for him. Looks like he might have a dead turn here. Um, the only way he can really do anything is either backstab eviscerate or prep eviscerate. And it just seems like such a waste where next turn you'd want to play Violet Teacher and prep eviscerate, maybe even backstab then. Yeah, interestingly, Hotform probably would have been much happier if that had been a Huffer that had been uh, had come out of the Animal Companion. That's right. The Misha with its four health is much more difficult for him to deal with. And Leoc would have just done less face damage yeah. to him. So yeah. it's really the best result for him. Yeah, Amelia. this is the absolute best result in this situation. Well, depends on who, who you are. If you're Neil, you're just, just the best. <laughs> if Hot Form, it's certainly the worst. And he is going to take his time, although I think there is merit to saying, like, you know, even though we know and Hot Form most likely knows there's not really much of a play, you can kind of make it look like it's a tougher decision to put some psychology mind games in your head. So Hot Form does choose to just pass, and, and I, I like that. I think his, his best play is to next turn play the Violet Teacher with preparation and eviscerate. Well, Hot Form's gonna have an insane turn yeah, this here. Is, this, this, this turn is now great. He has Violet Teacher, prep, eviscerate, backstab, kill all your stuff, make three guys. Yeah, I mean, and there's no, there's no Unleash the Hounds to punish this. Right. Not only that, but even I if his opponent did have Unleash the Hounds, he saw coin being utilized. Therefore, even if he had Unleash the Hounds, he can't pair it with Knife Juggler and make yeah. a really I'm devastating comeback. He also got some good information. He sees Argent Horse Rider, so he already immediately understands what kind of deck this is. Oh, man. And now, now Nelio's the one who doesn't have much of a turn, but uh, having, a, having a turn where you don't do much of anything when your opponent has six power and minions in the board is a lot scarier. Right, I mean, the weapon is usually uh, an excellent development of excellent use of mana, but it deals with nothing, and are you really going to commit to a face game against the rogue in this situation? With this type of hand as well, which is naturally going to be curving, and you, it doesn't look like you can kill Violet Teacher very efficiently, so if you play minions like the high main, you're asking to get punished later on by Sap or other cards like that. All right, well, the web spinner here kind of uh, dictates that he's just going to play Lothab next turn no matter what, as uh, there's some reason to not play the web spinner. If you want to save Lothab for a more key point in the game, you'd save web spinner to play alongside the Houndmaster on 5 men. It's true. I do think that Lothab, though, is, is basically his ticket to try to get another one of those turn threes, right? Like, mm -hmm. maybe his hand is just, like, all spells and he can't play anything. But, uh, we know that Hot Farm has some good action here. He does play the Azure Drake and is able to uh, trade in there. It looks like he's preserving his weapon oh, and no. a little bit of face damage. Oh. It's a hungry crab. But it is a one-mana minion, which does give Houndmaster easy slots. Oh, that's to true. It is also a beast. So it, it's a cheap beast that can work with either the Houndmaster or potentially a kill command later on. That's yeah, 3-4 three, three, is quite fair against this board. I still think that uh, Lothab might be the better option just because... You don't want to fall too far behind where Rogue can have sticky minions and he's doing damage to you, threatening to, to oil, right? So that's the biggest problem. That that eviscerate draw and, and the fact that you can have a good turn again this turn mm -hmm. with the shredder and weapon, right? I think it might just be a, a time to go face here. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you here. Getting uh, a lot of damage in. Hotform's at 22 as well. He's, he's yes. definitely in a, in a very safe spot life-wise. He does choose to get one point of damage okay. on that. That does open the uh, the Lothab up to either dying if it attacks into one of Hot Form's minions, right. or possibly dying to Eviscerate next turn if he doesn't trade. Uh, it also means that Nelio will get fewer minions off of Unleash the Hounds if he were to play it. I think Unleash the Hounds would have already been played already, which is why that kind of uh, seems unusual to me. Um, I, I guess he just doesn't want to commit to Fan and Ives or Blade 3 next turn. Yeah, so another way that it can backfire is if uh, Lothab ends up surviving as a 5-1 by trading into these four attack minions, and then you play Houndmaster or something to defend it, and then it picks up a really good trade again. Mm -hmm. um, but what it is interesting is that Hotform looks like he's just trying to set up for lethal as best as he can and position himself to be in a position to do that. So 
I really like that play. Now, Neil, Neilio has to weigh in, like, is it time for me to swing for the fences? You know, go for, you know, uh, a pilot shredder kill? Or can I still really win this game if I trade and play it slow? He does decide to take out the Azure Vic, which in this matchup is actually kind of scary in general. Not only because it's a larger minion, but also it does buff the rogue spell damage, which, as we see in Hot Firm's hand, uh, is made up of both Eviscerate and Phantom Knives and the Blink Flurry. So a lot of a lot of possible uh, scary things that come out of that. Oh, is oh, that ooh, it? Ooh, that may actually just end the game right here. If that... Yeah, that is. Yeah, that yeah is I think that's actually... Is able to just Blade Flurry. Go to the face and go to the face, and Hot Form is going to be taking game one with his Rogue deck. And that's a really big game. Um, uh, I mean, we talked about how. I mean, I think Rogue has an okay matchup here. Uh, it's just. We compared it to against Warrior, right? Right. So that, that disaster scenario didn't happen. But the fact that the Rogue got a win rather than a loss is a really big deal because it's, it's one of those classes that, you know, may, maybe, it's not, uh, maybe it's not at the bottom, but um, it's certainly not at the top. Well, everything went exactly according to plan for Hot Form. He was really hoping for either that mid-range hunter or the paladin to come out, and that's why he snuck that rogue in because he feels like, you know, classes like Druid, for example, which is decent against everything, mm -hmm. maybe even good. He has always a chance to fall back to it, but rogue, the, the the longer the series goes, it might get cornered by something like Warrior. Yeah, we were having a discussion uh, about the sort of overall pick theory with Hot Form last night, and he was saying that he really just wanted to ensure that he was able to, to get his Rogue against one of the decks that was not Warrior, because he felt his Rogue pretty much can't beat a Control Warrior deck, which is right. what he expected Nilio to bring. Yeah. I'm kind of curious. Uh, I think we should play the, the Paladin guessing game. <laughs> we have Mysterious <laughs> Challenger versus, let's just call it the Murloc Knight Paladin, right? It's none of your business, man. None of your business. <laughs> okay. Well played, kid, bro. Well played. <laughs> well, we'll find out right after this. We had an opportunity to sit down with Hot Form and chat with his friendliness with players. He talks to us a lot, but he also talks to some of his peers. Check it out. The friendliness of the other players, I think, would be the most surprising part. The other players, uh, although we're opponents, it feels really like comrades. When you're out there, you know, you're just hanging out waiting for things to happen, you're discussing strategies, and you're a little guarded about your own tech choices and those kinds of things, but when you're just there hanging out, it feels really like you're with a bunch of friends. So I think that was surprising to me. I thought some people would be more tense about it, but it's a really great feeling the way it worked out. Positivity is the name of the game for Hop Form as he is getting ready to go into game number two with a 1-0 lead. So you're feeling the Paladin here from Nilio. And does it really make a difference either way against either of these classes for Hot Form? Uh, I know that Hot Form was saying that he feels like his mage deck uh, has a good shot against either Paladin or against Warrior, but his disadvantage against Hunter. Uh, so it's it's in this position, he best get wins with both of his decks. Nelio doesn't, I don't think, have a particular deck that seems stronger against the overall lineup. So uh, I don't see a, a particular leaning either way. Yeah, I mean, overall, we just we just look at those classes. They're all different. They all look like just very tough matchups. It doesn't seem too one-sided, except for perhaps the Rogue and the Warrior, which we've uh, conveniently avoided. All right, well, we're going to go with the Druid versus the Paladin. And we do have cards like Haunted Creeper and Cog Hammer. Which kind of like it might indeed be the mysterious challenger. Uh, those are those are cards you can see in really any version of Paladin. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, I think the haunted creeper, creeper, haunted is, creeper is closer is to the more aggressive. That's side. true. Yeah. Creeper is typically seen more in the aggressive decks than the control decks. Though I think that creeper is actually a reasonable answer to just other aggressive decks from a control sure. Paladin deck. Yes. Uh, there aren't all that many great options the two mana slot for a Paladin deck in general. Did Nelio actually keep Consecration? No, no, he had no. the Cock Hammer and the Haunted Creeper and the Mini Bot. And, and now he away. apparently only gets two cards. Oh. <laughs> wow, oh, so that's we, how yeah. good we've Consecration determined, we've determined is, right? That the, the Paladin is such a strong class that <laughs> right. it, rather than starting with three cards, they start with two cards. Well, wow. maybe maybe it's just the traditional mulligan rules where if you throw back some cards, <laughs> you start with one less. <laughs> and then he's going to mulligan again. And then you and start with one have, card. Just, just going to have this Mini Bot. <laughs> <laughs> He's the lone it survivor. It could go all the way. I no. mean, mini bots. Uh, tra <laughs> what, what does it not trade up with? In, in according to its mana range, it's pretty much everything. <laughs> oh, it's it's pretty great. It's pretty uh, great. I think oh, flame it, juggler is the only enemy. Well, I guess so. We have flame found juggler. a secret. We have found a secret. So uh, I believe the. Uh, oh, this could just be like uh, Sunwalker Tyrion Paladin. You know? Right. It could be from two years it ago. It could be. That's Tyrion. true. Uh, with Scarlet Crusaders and whatnot. Yeah. Gosh. Well, we did see one player running Blood, and Light, Blood Knight. That was a really interesting 
thing back in the day. This is one of the biggest problems for Secrets Pallium. Dark the Darnassus Aspirant um, will go unchecked. And that's going to allow Hot Form some really big opportunities. Yeah. Though Delio does have the muster for battle, so he can contest it. The problem is that I, be I believe his secret. Yeah, his oh, secret double is. Double redemption. That ooh, is a bit that's weird. That's pretty unusual. But his secret is redemption. So uh, he's actually. It's, yeah, it's a little bit awkward if he does yes. uh, end up getting, say, his opponent uh, hero powering his face or swiping his face. But right. oh, Hot Form does choose to use a swipe on the mini bot, yeah. fearing perhaps avenge. Uh -huh. which is, one of the one of the, the really big threats if he did play that early. So yes, it's a very common setup if you have muscle for battle to play Avenge in the very beginning stages mm -hmm. of the game. And now Avenge will be the case. And the second redemption, like you said, is slightly unusual, but it's starting to come back again because you know the idea that redemption keeps something sticky on the board. So if you have blessing of kings in your deck. Uh, you have an opportunity to play more board-centric approaches. Again, the whole point is that you have board for this kind of thing. Well, Popform is still playing some uh, minions that are somewhat difficult to deal with. And uh, oh. Neilio just keeps Ooh. drawing cards that are more and more uh. awkward. I mean, even though he has the Mysterious Challenger for next turn... He's actually there... used so many of his secrets. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's drawn both Redemptions and both Avengers, right? Right. So it's just not going to pull either of those. He's pulling three secrets only. And that's... That's almost fair. Ooh. Neilio <laughs> is, is not happy here. That Ooh. Armorsmith is one of the very few four health minions for two mana that he wouldn't be able to actually trade into with his board. Mm -hmm. You're such a troll, Crib. The, uh, the thing about, like you said, that Mysterious Challenger only drawing three secrets is that the effect is compounded. Like, it's supposed to thin your deck, so that way you get closer right. to your actual threats like Dr. Boom or, you know, Blessing of Kings, Tyrion, etc. Um, so instead, you might draw some of these complicated secrets, and then your hand gets more fuller, too. Like, you can't play Avenge number two, so if he draws Divine Favors, one less card. One of the interesting things here, so few that decks... That Redemption do, again, yeah, by the way. So few, <laughs> decks, so few decks play two copies of Redemption that Hot Form is not playing around it here. Hot mm -hmm. Form is more likely to play around, uh, well, their potentially noble sacrifice. Right. Uh, potentially, he's, he's afraid of a possible... Uh, repentance, so maybe he sure. wants to play a Keeper of the Grove or an Aspirant this turn before he plays his Ancient of War next yes. turn. At, at the same time, uh, they mentioned how they've played against each other so often. Mm -hmm. I feel like Mysterious Challenger deck um, is something that you you would test thoroughly if you'd wanted to run two Redemptions. I think there's there's some thought at the back of Hot Form's mind that there are actually two Redemptions in this deck, and I think it's something that he just realized based on how much he's hesitating after that attack. There is a sequence where he can attack into this 1-1, one, one, and then it comes back to Redemption. He can swipe the remainder or yeah. use Keeper. Um, either way, it's going to be a relatively weak board set up for the Mysterious Challenger. Did he, yeah. did he get the swipe? This is the it looks like he held back the Keeper. I must safeguard yeah. the Lord. Okay. That mini bot's been through a lot. He's been <laughs> killed, he's been <laughs> silenced, he's been killed twice. twice. Yeah. <laughs> only only two secrets left for Nilio. Uh, we've seen. Does he. So, he, we haven't seen a competitive spirit from him yet. We have no. also not seen uh, a noble sacrifice from him yet. True. We've seen two copies of Redemption. We ha also have not seen Repentance yet. So, there's one of those secrets he doesn't have. Feels like Repentance might be it. Mm -hmm. Like, Redemption and Repentance are both secrets that often do absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, I, I feel like if. If you are looking for something to take out of the deck to put in another hmm. Redemption, Repentance just seems like a good call. Yeah, it's possible. Though here, if uh, if Hoffram does choose to play that uh, that Ancient, right. we'd really like to have a, a, a Redemption, a Repentance rather. I think he would assume Repentance because he has two Redemptions. Mm -hmm. And if you play two Redemptions, it leans more towards having like eight secrets as opposed to like five, the bare minimum. Hmm. Um, so that way you can interact with your secrets with two challengers more often. It it's, so it's, I would assume that's the case. It's somewhat interesting, Hot Form's last turn, where he did choose to uh, play that Keeper, ultimately, rather than play Swipe. And I, I think it's possible that he actually just ran out of time thinking about the possible right, secrets, so and he was just like, try. okay, I have to play this to silence this. Uh, and he was, he was afraid of the possible Avenge. Here, well, or, he, or the Repentance as well. He could have cleared if, um, if there was nothing there. Okay. Right, so now he knows that this is almost certainly either Competitive Spirit or Repentance. Mm -hmm. And competitive spirit it is. So Nelio, I mean, his Mysterious Challenger had some impact, but not not the highest. Yeah, uh, he, he's really looking uh, to try to draw some cards. But 
Uh, Hawthorne doesn't really have that big of a hand either, so a card like Divine Favor might not really see that much value. And, and we are we are seeing the uh, the real issue with the Mysterious Challenger deck sometimes when you do just draw these secrets. Not only was uh, Nelio's Mysterious Challenger that he drew later on less powerful because he'd already drawn some of these secrets, but now he's drawing some of those weak secrets mm -hmm. after the fact and uh, when he really needs more high impact cards. However, I do feel like Nelio's still in a okay spot because the two secrets that he has, um, Noble me. Sacrifice and Avenge, have a pretty big uh, like nuisance for Hot Form because he still doesn't know if maybe Nelio was holding Oof. on to Repentance. Though that Wrath is a really big draw. It is going to allow him to take oh off God, that uh, right. Serious Challenger. That will trigger the Avenge and then he can silence the Sludge Belcher. Such value here. I must That's save amazing. God. And not to mention that um, he's going to be able to deal with all the threats on the board. Oh, Ooh, my goodness. He, he was not anticipating this. Noble Sacrifice. That's, that's pretty significant. Yeah, that, that actually, he could have kept uh, either attacked his, his hero first or attacked yeah. with the minion that would have uh, would have survived first. Yes. That's a little bit of a misstep from Hot Farm there. Well, the lone jungler is not going to do that much work here. No, Hot Farm still has the, the Ancient of War left in his hand, and uh, Nelio really needs to find something right. powerful like... Tyrion or Doctor Who. Even, even Tyrion another... would have been insane in that position. Oh, well, both of the keepers are gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and more importantly, um, I feel like because he's running such a weird assortment of, of, of secrets, mm -hmm. there's a decent chance that not only is he running one Divine Favor, but he might be running like double Divine Favor setup, which sets up so many bad draws. Yeah. I mean, right now, Hot Form only has a single card in his hand, so Divine Favor, which in many cases is a powerful late game draw from the Paladin deck, would basically do nothing. Paladin Shredder, that's not big enough to contest that uh, that drew. Not bad, though. It's okay. Well, it's a good start. Hot Form is one card away from potentially ending this game. If he does find Savage a Savage Roar, do it. It, it. He's already played one, though, so it's a one-outer. Well, he's got more draws for him to find it now with that Ancient of Lore pick up here. Oh, he's now he's going to heal. heal. Yeah, he really wants to right. uh, deny the Divine Favor. I, I, I really get the feeling from some of the some of the hesitation, some of the thoughts, some of the spontaneous plays that Hot Form is making that he really knows exactly what Nelia is kept in and playing. And Haunted that's Creeper is gonna not going to do it. Do oh, actually, he can get one taunt off of the Shredder. Yeah, heal. I believe uh, Vitality Totem is enough. But that is his last chance. And that's not yeah, going to do it. So Hot Form is going to take game number two. Very convincing win. The victory that's not what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to lose <laughs> the Mysterious Challenger. You're supposed to go 3 0. Followed by yeah, the Asian the Pacific player is supposed to win. <laughs> yeah. What is this game? He's breaking all the trends. And our narratives, our narrative. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one narrative that's consistent is Rogue is winning. So. Uh, that is true. That is true. And now Hot Form uh, just has to pick up a win with his mage deck. And this is a deck that Hot Form is very confident in. He played it uh, at the America's Championship and uh, has a lot of experience with it. Yeah, he, I, I did talk to him about it. I mentioned how, you know, not a lot of people are playing Tempo Mage. And, you know, what do you, what do you think about that? Why are you bringing the tournament? And he's like, well, I keep beating people with it. <laughs> so it's just going to come back. <laughs> I mean, we saw Jab have a lot of success with it earlier today as well. It's a very strong deck, particularly mm. in, a, in a field of decks like Paladin, like Warrior, uh, where it's able to, to get ahead and stay ahead. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're going to take a quick break uh, and toss over to a segment with Nelio talking about some of the stuff from his background. So when we come back, we're going to have game number three and see what Hot Form can continue to do. Uh, at first, my family didn't believe that uh, my trip was paid by Blizzard. Like, they didn't believe that someone paid me to travel around the world to play Hearthstone. They, they believed that like, I, I would just like, like to play more Hearthstone. Like, I just do whatever I want. Like, and Hearthstone is what I want to do and what I'm doing here at BlizzCon. I, I want to win like, the, a big tournament. Like, I'm not interested in like small tournament. I mean, I want to win big tournaments like BlizzCon. Big Fish is all that matters. Win the BlizzCon and you'll be remembered for pretty much the rest of Hearthstone history. Well, it's worked for Firebat. <laughs> so <laughs> far, has. that's right. Yeah. I mean, he's got the right plan. It's just uh, a plan that's not easy to execute. Yeah, big tournaments are tough tournaments, and uh, Hot Firm is no easy opponent as he's learning right now. Certainly not with that mage coming out. I believe that we did 
get uh, information that Hot Form is playing the Tempo Mage mm -hmm. style. So it is definitely a, a tricky deck to navigate because some that, that that deck sometimes kills faster than Hunter. It's like you play out those Mana Worms yeah. very quickly, and then it's like, well, I win on turn four or five because I just Fireballed. And these Mana Worms are five threes. It's like, oh, great. Nexus Champion Sarad. Ooh, one of my favorite cards from TGT. <laughs> that card is a lot of fun. All right, well, it is going to be a control style war warrior from Nelio. Um, often what happens in this matchup is if, if the mage doesn't get a very good opener, um, it's just the warrior is out of reach for the entire rest of the game. So the most important part of this game is going to be just the opening three or four turns. If the mage can get some cards that go uncontested and hit for a repetitive amount of damage, um, the mage is just going to be in a dominating position for the rest of the game. Yeah, I do like the choice from Neilio as well to bring warrior. In the instance where it is freeze mage, he would be a heavy favorite. Mm -hmm. It has been a lot of freeze it. mages. Yeah, we, exactly. we, have, we have seen, I believe, three separate freeze mages in this tournament. This is I the seen maybe four with with Nereus. Nyria, we haven't seen. So, Nyria, purple. Oh, we did see Nyria, freeze. purple, and Thice, right? Correct. Yeah, I believe those are the mm. three freeze mages. Okay. We saw uh, we saw Jab earlier today playing uh, playing tempo style mage right. as well. Okay. So mage is actually a, a reasonably popular choice among the competitors here, and has been a very successful one. Okay, well, um, Hotform has a pretty good hand, but it's mostly to deal with aggressive decks. It doesn't seem like a particularly good hand against the Control Warrior here, as uh, the removal just won't do very much in a lot of cases. Arcane Missiles is great against something like, say, Paladin, Muster for Battle, uh, especially with something like Flame Waker, but is not particularly good when your opponent has, say, an Acolyte of Pain in play. Well, you do have the... Uh, flame cannon for it, but you, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like you don't want to give warrior cards because warrior with cards can pick the proper removal for any situation, and especially with cards like what? Bash now no. kind of rotated in, it gives you the ability to piece together damage very effectively. Sometimes warriors in a really tough position of like, do I shield slam this four health minion um, versus save it for the bigger threats, which inevitably will come. Yeah. Well, the Justicar car is also an interesting one because we know one, it's in the deck, and two, it's been drawn already. It's certainly going to be a game of the warrior just holding off the damage and the aggression the first right. few turns. Um, if you can stabilize with just a card, there's almost no way you could lose. Yeah, the, the mage deck, though, is really looking to get the game to a spot where a card like just a car is unlikely to matter. It wants to really start to close out the game before the warrior gets to the point where it gets to keep hero powering. And frankly, spending six mana on a just a car, that it does, which doesn't really impact the board, is usually, unless the warrior is already winning, going to be a losing proposition. Mm -hmm. Well, this gives Neilio two draws, and you know how former already recognized that he's not going to be able to deny that unless he's willing to go off curve. This also does uh, get a secret out of platform's deck. Sure. We saw he already picked up a mirror mirror image, so uh, it's possible that he's actually, or rather mirror entity. Yep. It's possible he's actually out of secret. Many of these decks only play two copies of mirror, uh, sure. mirror entity in total. I think you might be right um, in, in the general case. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we see Nexus Champion and Flame Strike, which means he's probably expecting oh. to draw through a heavy amount of his deck before he closes That's the game. That's true. So I think in that case, the third secret is is quite likely. And it looks Emilio is testing for it, and no, it's not there. Wow. So uh, unless, of course, oh no, it can't because we know it is Mirror Entity. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I was thinking it may have been like an effigy. He had two effigies. Sure. No, that yeah. cannot be the case because he wasn't able to play it. The other option, of course, is if Hot Form is holding his secrets and he's not playing it. So. One th is he still is not out of the woods just yet. Ashbreak off the top is a great draw for Hot Form, being able to keep up the momentum. Well, actually, the Nexus Champion would have been uncontested there. <laughs> oh, it would have. That Death Spike but does take out the uh, the Azure Drake right away. But they, I still think the Drake sets up better plays for the following uh, turns because you can guarantee champion value the following Major turns in fit. turn seven, for example. This game is going exactly how Nelio wants it. He's still at a relatively high health total in 21. He's able to, to break that mirror entity with uh, an armor smith, which gives his opponent a relatively weak minion. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's getting to the point where he is able to start developing those big minions in his hand. It's, it's wow. not only just that he's <laughs> been able to stabilize and not take too much damage, is, yeah. but he has he has 10 armor in his hand along with the Justice Card, along right. with a Brawl, things go really wrong. So right. he has all the tools he needs to continue the game from this point. Hot form on a quest wow. here. Uh, so that was actually a pretty a pretty interesting uh, pickup from that unstable portal with the questing yeah. adventurer. Certainly. Uh, Nelio can remove it immediately with that uh, death spite he already has in play, however. Yeah, uh, assuming that um, he ends up targeting that, 
Hmm, you, you really have to be mindful that it is it is somewhat likely to be a mirror entity. So I think the uh, the Shield Maiden, or even perhaps the Justicar, the Justicar isn't great, but you can play it with an Execute. You'll take a lot of damage this turn, but you can stabilize a lot of armor next turn. You know, it looks like Nilia does not want to, in fact, break the mirror entity just oh, yet. Oh, another way to in an Acolyte. And you can attack the Acolyte, only give his opponent one card, and then execute. Speak to me. That was a great draw. Yeah, yeah that, that went very well for Nina there, picking up the uh, the cheap minion that allows him to play around his opponent's mirror entity more effectively. But now Hotform can legitimately shield slam off of the Nexus Champion's run. <laughs> so can Nelia. <laughs> He wanted to use Execute or Shield Slam, but he, now that he has Shield made in hand and just a card, yeah, he's likely to keep armor. Uh, maybe not next turn, but uh, in the turn shortly after. Sure. All right, Sarad coming down. I th what would be like one of the craziest results here? No, it looks like Sarad's not coming down. Changed mind. Doesn't it's, want to. It's just not not a good enough trade on the board. Sure. Ooh, that that. Uh, Archmage Antonite is, is probably the most important card for Hot from right now. Uh, it, it will allow him to potentially assemble a lot of damage over the uh, over the next few turns. Though he does choose to to just use his Frostbolt here to clear off the Acolyte to deny a draw rather than potentially keep it to combo with the Archmage. Sure. He does have the the, the uh, Nexus Champion though, which can potentially set up additional mm -hmm. additional spells for that Archmage later on. So Warrior's gonna dip down to 12, but with two Shield Maidens and just a card, very easy so for Neo to rebound. rebound. Uh, like, it, it's, it's, it doesn't seem like much. It's like, oh, you gain four armor instead of two armor. But incrementally, every single turn, especially against the class that's already hard to kill when it's gaining two armor a turn, it just, it just gets absolutely insane after right. a few rounds. The Water Elemental would have been nicer if it was able to get ahead of the weapon attack, but even then, you still have ways to gain armor and shield slam. Welcome to the Grand Tournament. So now Hot Firm really knows that he is he's on a real clock here, yeah. and this uh, this allows uh, Nilio to actually armor up big enough to shield slam this down despite attacking into that minion first. This is a really bad position for uh, for Hot Firm right now. He's got the champion Sarad. Let's see what it's uh, able to pull out here. What would be hilarious? Uh, what would be hilarious here? Seal, two damage. Lightning bolt. That's right. good enough. Oh, he could have played actually the sorcerer practice with lightning bolt. I'm a little surprised he did not see that. Yeah. Maybe he just acted a bit too quickly. I mean, often people play these decks out so many times, and then when like a new element comes in, often they just <laughs> huh. you know. Oh, uh, Underthink it, uh, but maybe he's also just saving uh, Sorcerer Apprentice for a Flame Waker turn or a Permanent Titus as well. No respect for the champion Sirad. He ends up Ooh. not shield slamming it. That's a pretty, uh, a pretty good pickup there from Hot Form. Arcane Intellect. It is, but if you play that, you kind of commit to playing just the Sorcerer Apprentice, which doesn't seem like enough yeah. this turn. Yeah, playing the Drake uh, is just more presence onto the board. And you have to be more aggressive in general. Makes sense. Neilio picks up Harrison Jones, so it's important information if um for the good bomb here in the future. Okay. Well that that just means you don't play Geddon this turn, I guess. Hmm. Just an interesting thing of like when you wonder as the warrior like how do I lose from this position? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's just like primary concern of it's I'm really very far ahead. Tinnitus, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a, a big part of the reason why he's choosing. Oh, he he does use the shield slam, right? I'm surprised to see the Harrison over the shield maiden. I think I think it's because like Harrison won't get any better on the board here. The board's empty, and it might bait out like flame strike. Wow, actually, mirror image. Yeah. Mirror Image is fantastic against Warrior. Especially um, with Antonitis. Especially with Antonitis. Yeah. But so it's also worse against Brawl. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is a little awkward against Brawl. Once upon a time, Neilio was um, 12 points away from dying. And now he has more armor than you start off with. <laughs> I wonder if he'll go with the uh, the Mana Worm or just the Frostbolt face. I think I like the Frostbolt face a little bit more just because there's fewer targets on the board. So if Brawl does come down, um, you know, we, we say there's a, a higher chance of him surviving the brawl, but really that just means there's a higher chance of him straight up winning the game. 
It's true. All right, well, let's find out who is the strongest of them all, because the brawl is almost certainly to come out here. Who wins in a yeah. fight? Do Absolutely. You, do you even attack a 0-2? No. I don't think so. Absolutely you want to make, make them the most likely th things to win. You don't want to let your opponent have a, any chance of Antony just coming out ahead. And it will be... Exactly that. Mirror image that wins the brawl. So I guess the second best option for Nilio, because he'd rather have his uh, shield main survive, but he's got... Ooh, there's another mirror image. The funny thing about this game is uh, the Warriors at 30 health, but not only that, they just just higher than that. 36 <laughs> health? <laughs> it's an unusual spot. And there still is, I believe, one unstable portal in Hotform's deck, maybe? So that, it could is, be a game changer. He's run, run out of most of his big threats here. Uh, needs to find something else. These things, like Fireball, Pings, that's not going to close up the game. Nilio mm -hmm. is just gaining too much armor from his hero power at this point. And he does even have that big game hunter if something like Dr. Boom were to come out. I think Dr. Room is a fairly likely candidate to be in any major. Oh, deck. yeah, absolutely. But I'm saying that, that, that Nilio has an answer right. to that already. So right, exactly. it's going to be a tough game for Hot for him to find a way back into. Absolutely. Um, it seems like the. Uh, actually, I don't know what the best weapon would be. Actually, all these options are terrible. Yeah, you, you know your opponent has another fireball, too. So even if you play Baron Geddon, it just gets fireballed. And then you're actually behind on board. So Death Spite. <laughs> Is your most powerful weapon, but do you even have a guarantee that you'll be able to attack with it again? You probably don't. You can't really tempo BGH for the exact reasons that you mentioned. Killer. Right. So, though, right now, you know, Nilio has that, that like a Doctor Boom. Yeah, Ooh. it is Doctor Boom. Wow. Wait, how do you know? <laughs> Wait, is there some like weird thing that you just know when it's drawn? No, I, I, I saw it like clip in a little bit in the corner there. Ah, uh, okay, okay. You saw the boom bots? <laughs> I've got the beast. No, 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 no. Oh, gotcha. Well, Big Game Hunter getting stabbed in the back here. Yeah. He's been betrayed by his friend. Hot Form yeah, is almost is, out of cards. This is just going to be a fatigue game. Hot Form does, does not have the tools to actually close this game out. Um, I don't know if that's actually is true. That, if that last card is Unstable Portal, can get something, but... No, but if, if Nelio gets a bad draw, he's frozen forever. Alistraza has to run into two Mirachis and then get frozen. Okay, that's well, a good draw. <laughs> yes, that's an all right one. Ha what is Hotform's last card? Do you use two Unstable Portals? I believe the last card is Unstable Portal, assuming he's running two copies. What would be the greatest thing ever to get? Uh, we usually say Deathwing, but I'm willing to be surprised. Oh, it's not. Maybe did he play two unstable portals? Maybe maybe we missed one of them. One of them was Questing Adventure for sure, but he. I don't remember another yeah, one. Yeah, I think it might just be the it one. Might just have the one. Being able to kill off. Uh, All right, this is actually, is pretty, this is actually pretty, big. pretty big. It's six damage versus four health gain per turn. Yeah, it's, it, it can work. Mm, no, not no, anymore. No, certainly not. Now you just you literally can't, can't win. win. Yeah, the the four armor and hero power is good enough to beat the rest of Hot Form's uh, everything. Yeah, and, he, and Hot Form Absolutely recognizes everything. it. It just concedes. Yeah. All right. Well, Hot Form is not able to clean sweep Nilio, and uh, this might actually be the start of a comeback. We have seen uh, we have seen some very very close matches today. And it is something that you can't expect of uh, such a high caliber tournament. Yeah, Warrior doing what Warrior does best, bringing it to fatigue and fighting the attrition <laughs> battle. Yeah, just literally beat every card in Hotform's deck. Yeah, <laughs> I've trumped all 30 of your cards. And he's gotten full information, too. Yeah, that's another that's thing true. That's, that's important to know is that uh, from this point on, for games four and five, if we go to game five, Nilio knows card for card what uh, Hotform's playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, that is an aspect that I didn't even think about. While uh, the Warrior, you know, it's, it might be the best against the mage, uh, but it's probably pretty close to some of the other decks. But really, if you're going to win, you're going to see every single card, as you mentioned. That's true. And uh, that just gives you a, a better chance for your other decks. Considering you have to win with all three, that's the perfect way to do it. So great call there. Yeah, I know that Huffram was saying that he feels like his uh, mage deck is a, a pretty significant underdog to Nelio's hunter deck. So I, I would expect that's a, a good place for Nelio to go next. Okay, so you're, you're anticipating Hunter? I would I would think so. Uh, the We did, even saw the Water Elemental from Hot Form's deck, which makes it particularly strong against uh, decks like Paladin that are weapon-based here. So uh, it, it is probably the best chance that he has right now. Okay, well, I think, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Both. It just depends, because I know for a while, uh, you know, I talked with some of the other players before in the past, and they always felt like Temple Mage was just better against Hunter, mm -hmm. against a lot of those smaller, like, one-health creatures, or even, like, um, 
Like it's one of the few classes that can deal effectively with Archer Horse Rider right. if you have um, the Flame Wicker out on board. Well, it's it's certainly really good against Face Hunter, I believe. Yes. Uh, if you get like a good opener, the Face Hunter just has no chance because you remove their minions so efficiently with often residual effects of creatures. Um, but um, the, like the, the the slower hunters don't really have those. Uh, minions that are easily disposed of, uh, and uh, it, it does seem like a tougher matchup. With Nelio playing more of a hybrid, it's kind of hard to say which way it goes. I mean, the Paladin deck, too, has lots of very small minions that are very vulnerable to Flame Waker. Uh, cards like Mustard for Battle, just the hero power, lines up pretty poorly in that matchup. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, you know, you guys convinced me. So with that, we're going to go into game number four in just a second. Uh, before we do that, though, we had an opportunity to sit down with Hot Form and just get to know him a little bit better. So enjoy this little segment. So there are things that tend to take me away from pro gaming. Um, I did the law school application and I did pretty well on that, but I've decided to take a year in between. That feels like a really big commitment in my life and this is a lot of fun. I've enjoyed gaming my entire life, so I want to try this out, you know, experience the world a bit first before I make that big of a decision. I do have plans for the money if I win, not all of it of course, uh, but I want to take a vacation for sure. I think a uh, vacation I'm really interested in right now is going to Australia. I could just picture like renting a Jeep and kind of driving through the outback with some of my friends. I think that would be such a great experience. So I would love to use the money towards that type of vacation. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds really great. You know, uh, you know, we're, we're just kind of chuckling that um, he said he wanted to visit Australia, and that's where Raynad will be joining us later in BlizzCon. The main event is actually chosen. Like, oh, he can go out packing with Raynad. That's go, go hang know? out. Yeah. They can rent some mopeds and go <laughs> in the Australian <laughs> desert. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, be be yeah. killed by one of the many dangerous and deadly creatures in, in Australia. It, it actually, I mean, it is actually a oh, yeah. very serious case. <laughs> We're not really I'm joking not, like, half the time. It, though I, have, I have a number of Australian friends who are like, yeah, yeah what's, the, what's you know, the, the most prominent thing about Australia? It's like, ah, oh, the number of things here that can just kill you at any moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of people have survived. So, they live uh, fast and furious <laughs> down there. And so do we, especially with, against a class like Hunter, which can kill you very rapidly, uh, as well as Tempo Mage. And you know, starting off on the coin for Hot Form is really big. This Tempo Mage benefits a, a huge amount off that coin, as well as the extra card. Let's talk about this Mirror Image. It's a card that um, it's not unseen, but it is rare in Tempo Mage. And I also think it's much more rare that you have two of them. It seems like a mm -hmm. card that it's obviously not very good against small minions. It's not very good if you're losing. Um, it it doesn't particularly make much of a difference uh, against like a warrior who armors up a lot. So wh what is it really trying to do? Is it really just trying to punish druids and, and more like the mid-range type of classes? I actually think Mirror Image is at its best against warrior, mm -hmm. uh, but only when you have it in the early turns of the game because it's so good right. against their weapons. We saw last game Hotform didn't draw his Mirror Image until very late in the game when the game was pretty much out of reach at that point already. Yeah. It wasn't really able to have much of an impact. They just got brawled away. But if you're able to get that mirror image down early on to protect something like a Mana Worm or a Sorcerer's Apprentice from your opponent's weapon, it can be very, very impactful. All right. Well, uh, Nelia opens up the game with his web spinner. It is going to be met with the Mana Worm. And uh, actually, no answer right away means that Hotform is going to start winning. And the aspect of, of just winning, even by the smallest margin, makes it so the mage just really mm -hmm. starts the steamer a lot of control. Firebat told me that uh, Mana Worm start, the difference between Tempo Mage starting with Mana Worm and not starting Mana Worm is actually literally winning and losing. He's like willing to say like 70% <laughs> plus win rate is like, like that, that, he's, he's just exaggerating to the point where it's so important to start with Mana Worm because everything that you have thereafter synergizes with it. What I'm really curious here is if he uses Frostbolt versus Flame Cannon. It looks like he chooses to go with the Frostbolt. Yes. Uh, it does make him somewhat marginally more vulnerable or uh, marginally better against something like a Misha coming off an animal. Yeah. Game. Well, or, not or King say Mukla. A King Mukla. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, I think fr uh, Flame Cannon and Frostbolt kind of do the same against King Mukla. Although what's interesting is Mukla gives bananas for the Mana Worm. Yeah. He has to play it, though. Look at that. Mukla he has is, to play the Mukla. Very, well, he does have Explosive Trap, which could potentially answer yeah. that Mana Worm right away. Oh, boy. But uh, but it's definitely a scary spot to be in playing Mukla and giving your opponent uh, bananas when they are a spell-based synergy deck. It's true. And the Explosive Trap is a loss in tempo. You give your opponent to develop you know, Flame Waker on the board for, for nothing. But he does choose to go with the Explosive Trap, doesn't want to banana up that uh, that Mana Worm. And if he did play Mukla, it, it would have been a pretty big disaster, I think. He would have, yeah, been, he would, would, uh, have, been. would have gotten Flame it's Cannon so funny, Coin though. pinged and just still taken a ton of damage. Mm -hmm. It's a disaster any turn is played, actually. <laughs> right, because it gives bananas for 
like Flame Waker and all these other things in general. Yeah, um, the only time it's not is if you use it for a kill command activator. <laughs> that is that is definitely a, a card that is at its worst in a matchup where your opponent can make excellent use of the uh, of the spells that Ooh. Serenas are. I but don't think you really want to see that second high main right now. Um, I think this is a turn where you just Houndmaster. You know for sure that it is two mirror entities. Yes. So, I mean, what are you hoping to do? If you play Lothab, it trades for itself next turn. I feel you might as well just play a creature that trades for itself this turn. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's definitely the case. You want to play the Houndmaster here. You certainly don't want to play Mukla. Give your opponent bananas. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it, and not only that, but you know, the Mukla will survive on Hotform's side and then trade into whatever you play the following turn. So Unstable Portal, Ooh, that's, that's, a that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a three drop people almost play already. That's right. And now Hotform's going to deny the opportunity for um, Equal Horn Bow yep. to get value. So he coins out the mirror image, even though he could synergize with spell synergy cards. He chooses to go for that because, again, this deck wants to be a little bit more aggressive. And there's the bow. So oh. the, the mirror image really coming up big here, uh, protecting that 4-3 from uh, being removed by that bow. It also plays around the Lothep, uh, which he nearly ended up Let's actually having. Yeah. Yeah. So a very good choice there from Hopful on the previous turn. And coin timing is so important as the second player. That's a good card to draw after a high main. <laughs> It's so, uh, Nelio has a lot of powerful cards in his hand, but uh, Tempo Mage is doing as Tempo Mage does, and it's right. very far ahead in the board already. And I have to keep in mind, Nelio is on the verge of elimination here. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's going to lose, a, like, a chunk of his health as well. For hot form very well might just isolate again this high main. I'm sorry, it's not elimination. It's losing, losing the match. Eliminating yeah, happened half of his chances the verge, to win. Uh, yeah. Whoa. On, the <laughs> <laughs> on the verge of going to the elimination match this evening. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's see what he gets off this champion, Sarad. And this is going to allow him to... Ooh, Whoa, that that's not what he's looking for. We see a checkle from Hot Farm there. Yeah. I mean, you know what I think one of the best <laughs> if things possible goes wrong, would have been? If I think goes Frost wrong. Shock was like the best spell in the game. <laughs> Frost Shock for hit zero the high main. <laughs> it's true. Frost Shock would have been great. Or um, or Conceal. Oh my <laughs> god, Conceal would have been nuts. All right, you one up me. You that, got me there. That Argent Horse Rider may very well be an excellent draw here. He can potentially clear off the, uh, the zero, zero two. Probably zero two with a weapon. Right. Then, uh, yeah, that's the also horse possible. rider into the right. three two. Yeah, just you can save zero two HP. there, save a little bit of life, send the horse rider into the sorcerer's apprentice, and then clear off quite a bit of Hotform's board. Yeah. However, there is this critical health where Nelio realistically real could just die to a fireball, um, plus a little extra juice, because he can't clear everything. Oh, he has the extra juice. It's, it's arcane missiles most of the time. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> True. So and, oh, oh, there's fireball. So that is. That actually, that's, that's actually just getting, it yeah. has to be enough. It's guaranteed lethal because right because they uh, have one the high right. main minions don't spawn yep. in between the and sequence that, of wow. the wow. Hot form. Team Canada goes to the winners match three one with his unusual lineup, winning with not only the Mage and Druid but also the Rogue. Yeah, and uh, that was uh, that was a little bit of an expected win, but I'm I'm glad that it happened. My uh, my Canadian brothers have gone <laughs> kind of through, you know, once one step closer at least. But uh, also, the uh, the Asia Pacific doesn't dominate the rest That's of the right. world quite completely. <laughs> their first only loss. only three players chance. won their first game. <laughs> yeah. Three and one, 75%, but uh, you know, that's still a really good showing for Asia Pacific. And if that's any indication, I think Neilio still has a very strong chance to go through the lower bracket, which will be played again later today. After the next match, which you saw on screen, Nias versus Zoro, that's going to wrap up all of our inaugural group matches. Then we start fighting for elimination. We have guys like Life Coach, who's so powerful and, and purple. They, both these guys might get eliminated early on. I'm looking yep. forward to see how it's going to transpire. Excitement is palpable. <laughs> Crips words. And with that, we're going to go to an interview with Rachel. She's waiting with Hot Form for a couple of words. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Hot Form, and uh, he's just informed me that he's going to say whatever he wants to say, despite whatever question I ask. So, Hot Form, the mic is yours. Uh, thanks. Well, I think the most important thing that I wanted to do was uh, just thank my friends and my community um, for all the support that they've given me. Like, I see so many people working together as a team to help me get here, and that really humbles me, so I have to give thanks to them. You guys know who you are, and thank you so much for that support. Awesome. Can I ask about your rogue deck now and your choice to include that? 
I'll have some more words maybe if I win the next match, but I'm looking forward still to more games, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I'm going to get out of Dylan right now, but hopefully you'll see him later on. Actually, you definitely will, because he is still in the running, and the casters, I'm going to give it back to you. All right, well, congrats, Hot Form. Yesterday, he was feeling really confident. In fact, he's just one of the most confident players here. It's one of those things where he, he's putting so much time into both his practice and his, his entire community that he feels like this is something that, uh, you know, he's earned for himself, so couldn't be happier for the guy. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, he loves his fans. What can you do? <laughs> and he's very secret about his decks and no information for us. It's true. Yeah. He wants I will, to keep everything. I will everything not tell you why I played Rogue. <laughs> right. Even though, You'll find out later. <laughs> even though another person has also played Rogue and succeeded, that means Rogue's, uh, again, a very clean 100% win rate. Uh, we'll see how that ends I up playing out. the Rogue out. dropped a game for us, Kaka, before it ended up taking Oh, you're one. correct. You're correct. Yeah. It's two correct. and one, which is... Two but every one. lineup Decent. with a Rogue Better than won. I had anticipated. Yeah, that's right. The, the rogue <laughs> players have gone through. For now, uh, we'll see how things end up panning uh, before we go into our next match. We'll talk also about our sponsors. Thank you so much for all of them who are supporting us. And make sure that you guys stay engaged in the, the conversation by hashtagging HWC 2015. Send your correct congratulatory tweets to Hot Form. And let them know that you're supporting him as well. We're going to go to a quick break. Before we do that, we're going to also have some highlights from the last few games brought to you once again by the Windows 10 Game DVR. We'll be right back.